I'm Luke Atkinson, and welcome back to our series on the Army of God. Today we're on part four, where we'll be talking mainly about the shield of faith. Let's jump right in. So far in our series, we've covered the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, and the shoes of the gospel of peace. But before we go and talk more about the shield of faith, I just wanted to recap of why we're even talking about the armor of God. We don't put on the armor of God so that we can just go to war and fight against people. That's not what the armor of God is meant for. We are called to put on the armor of God because there is a spiritual battle and spiritual darkness that is in this world, and we are called to stand firm against this darkness. Just like in all of our other videos, I think it's important for us to understand the concept of what Paul is talking about when he refers to the shield. The shield that he often would have referred to would have been the Roman version of their shield called the scutum. Now this shield would have been about 107 centimeters long by 59 centimeters in width, or approximately three and a half feet by two feet. They often were made with wood covered overlaced with brass, and if you could think about it as an early version of the riot shield. Now a key part of the Roman shield was not just in its singular use, but it was used purposely in wartime tactics as a group. Much like the phalanx that the Greeks would use, the Romans had a shield formation known as the testudo, or in Latin, which is Latin for tortoise. While this formation may be lacked in speed and made up for protection, the whole idea was for the soldiers to link up and form almost an impenetrable wall, both in front and with shields overlaying, so that no projectiles such as fiery darts or arrows could penetrate. So we must ask ourselves though, what is faith and why is it important? So the definition of faith can look like this. It is the complete trust or confidence in someone or something. In Hebrews chapter 11 verses 1 through 3 we read this. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For it for by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. And when we look at this, it's not saying that we just believe in things just simply out of a blind or lack of education or lack of knowledge. Because take gravity or wind, for example. We can see the evidence of them there by the effects of what they have on our world, but yet we cannot physically see them. Faith is the same way where we can't actually see the physical evidence of faith, but we can see the results and actions of having faith in this world. A lot of people might deem faith as a lower form that is not based off of facts. But it takes more courage to have faith, even despite not having all the facts. Now you might ask yourself, why is it important to have faith? We read furthermore in Hebrews that it says that in same chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith it is impossible to please him. That is talking about God. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And in Romans 5, verses 1 through 2, it goes even further by saying that, Therefore, since we have been justified, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Bottom line, what we're getting to is without faith, there's no assurance of salvation. Because if you can't even grasp to know or believe and understand God, then the cross and everything that Jesus did has no impact. Faith, though, isn't just meant to be a one-person ideal or one-person task. 
Just as we talked earlier about the early Roman shield formation, we are too called to link as brothers in Christ. Because when one person's faith is shaking or their faith has been knocked down and stuff, it is up for us as believers to join together and lift one each another up and protect those with our shield of faith. If you have more questions or wanting to know what faith really looks like, I would encourage you to read the book of James. James is a very practical book which addresses not just a faith, but a faith that is alive, a faith in action. And that is the faith that we are called to. Not a faith that's just on blind belief, but is on knowledge of who God is, what he's done, and what he continues to do, and a faith that is alive and present in our lives. I hope through this video that your understanding of why it's important the shield of faith is strengthened and that you can be encouraged in the midst of whatever season you are. Join us next time as we cover the helmet of salvation. God bless.